Hello everyone and welcome to the YouTube channel of Being ACCA. This is Tushita Gupta, ACC affiliate and in this video we are solving another past paper question from your FM. So it's a September-December 23 paper uh, and the name of the company is Marble Company. So you uh, reading the very first requirement, I can ascertain that it's a question that pertains to the cost of capital unit of your syllabus. Now uh, let us get started uh, with uh, just first reading a little bit about the requirement. You have to use the market values and then you have to calculate the after tax weighted average cost of capital. So let us read through the information and then we will work out first the costs of capital of different sources of finance and then we will be calculating the market values and then eventually the VAC. So, Marble Company wishes to calculate its current weighted average cost of capital as a part of review of the company's performance in delivering shareholder value. Now, dividends per share paid to ordinary shareholders in the recent years are as follows. So, this is the information pertaining to the dividends. Dividend for 20x8 of 0.84 per share is to be paid shortly. So, Marble Company has an issue 226 million number of ordinary shares with a nominal value of 0.5 per share and a current come dividend share price of 11.93 per share which means this dividend of 0.4 is already built into this share price of 11.93 for all of my calculations I'm supposed to use the x dividend share price so I will subtract the uh, dividend that is due to be paid shortly from this price over here and then marble company has an issue 20 million preference shares with a nominal value of one dollar per share and a current x dividend price of uh, 2.27 per share or uh, 25 percent per share preference dividend has just been paid so instead of you know reading through the entire case study let us continue to work out the cost of capital side by side as in when we are reading the question so this is uh first we are talking about the cost of equity so as far as the cost of equity is concerned, first I will need my dividend growth rate. So for calculating my dividend growth rate, I know that the formula is I have to take the early, uh, you know, the latest dividend. Latest dividend is 0.84. Divide that by the earliest dividend, which is 0.69. And this needs to be raised to the power of uh, n minus 1. So if you have the data 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 years, so 5 minus 1 gives you 4. So this needs to be raised to the power of 1 by 4 and if you subtract 1 from it you will have your growth rate. So convert it into a percentage format and you will have your growth rate 5.04. Roughly you can say 5% of growth rate which is applicable on your dividends. Then if I calculate my X dividend share price my share price is going to be uh, 11.93 minus the dividend which is just about to be paid of 0.84. So this is my uh, uh, X dividend share price. And then uh, moving ahead to we now have all of the information that we need for calculating the cost of equity. So cost of equity is going to be firstly you have your uh, most recent dividend. Uh, divide, uh, multiplied by 1 plus the growth rate. So 0.84 is your most recent dividend multiplied by 1.05. 1 is uh, there in the formula and then uh, 0.05 is the growth rate that we have. And then you divide this by uh, your current share price which is 11.09 and to this entire figure you will be adding 5% of the growth. So you can put this in brackets and to my overall answer, I want to add 5%. So if I convert this to a decimal format, I will have roughly 12.95 or 13% uh, as my uh, cost of equity. Now let's speak about the cost of preference shares. The next thing that we saw was the preference shares. So the cost of preference shares is simple. You have in your uh, numerator the dividend and in your denominator you have the market price. So talking about preference shares, my dividend um, dollar one is the nominal value and 25% is the dividend rate. So 1 into 25%, 25 cents of dividend that you are paying and 
this needs to be divided by the market price. Market price is readily given to us 2.27. So it's a simple calculation, this divided by this figure and then multiplied by 100 to convert to a percentage format. So you have roughly 11% as your cost of preference shares. Now we are done till here. Marble company is partly financed by 6% uh, 6.5 percent convertible loan notes with a total nominal value of 94 million dollars interest on the loan notes has just been paid and the loan notes have an x interest value of 107.11 per hundred dollars worth of nominal value of the loan note at the end of five years loan notes will either be redeemed at nominal value or converted into eight ordinary shares of marble company per loan note the future share price growth is expected to be six percent per year loan notes are secured on the non-current assets of marble company so we need to find out the cost of the convertible loan notes over here all right convertible loan notes so firstly, I need to find out how much my interest payment. So basically, it's going to be the NPV of all of the cash flows that are going to be received from this loan note. So for, uh, you know, the time that I have over here, it's uh, at year zero. Uh, my apologies, you're going to uh, calculate the IRR over here. So you have the market value given to you, which is... 107.11 you put that as a negative figure over here then for the first year and all of the years after that five years you're getting the interest so it's going to be the after tax values of the interest so 6.5 percent is what your interest is and this needs to be multiplied by one minus the tax rate so one minus 26 percent so with this, you calculate your interest rate. So this is going to carry through for all of the years. And in the last year, you're either going to have the conversion into shares or the redemption. So redemption is either at the nominal value or eight shares. Let's see how much eight shares would be worth five years from now. So it is mentioned that presently your uh, value of the share is looking something like 11.09. So on this value, 11.09, it will be applicable that you have a uh, growth of 6%. So into 1.06 raised to the power of 5 years. So this is what the share price is going to be. And then you will be getting 8 equity shares. So multiplied by 8. So either you can get 118.7274 or you can get 100. So obviously the investor is going to choose the higher value. So you can add over here. 118.73 roughly so this is what your cash flow in the end is going to look like now simply you have to work out the irr over here and this will give you your answer select all values and then you hit enter with this you will arrive at the cost of your convertible loan notes as well so with this, we are done with the cost of all of the sources. Now let us plot the market values. So market values. Firstly, I will be taking the ordinary shares. So for ordinary shares, I have 226 number of shares, 226 million multiplied by 11.09. So this is what the market value of my equity looks like. Then if I talk about the preference shares, my preference shares are currently trading at 2.27. And how many of them do I have? I have 20 million preference shares. So this gives me the, num uh, the market value of my preference shares. And then if I want to find out the market value of my loan notes, so it's going to be equal to 94 million is the nominal value. So 90, if I need to first find out the number of loan notes, 94 million divided by 100. And then presently their market values are looking like uh, 107.11. So this needs to be multiplied by 107.11. So with this, you will have the value of your loan notes as well. And you can sum it up over here so that you have the total market value of the
company all right now let us move towards the calculation of vac so vac is going to be first equal to your ordinary share uh, you know the cost of equity multiplied by the value of equity divided by the total so this is what your first bracket is going to be like secondly you will take the cost of your preference shares multiply that by the value of the preference shares divided by the total and then add the last bracket last bracket is going to be your cost of the convertible loan notes multiplied by this value divided by this value so with this we are done with the entire calculation you hit enter and you will arrive at your vac converted to a percentage and 12.67 is what your vac is going to look like with this we are done with the 11 marker requirement that we have moving ahead to the next question so it's a four marker question which wants you to discuss the relative merits of the CAPM model and the dividend growth model in calculating the cost of your equity. So the very first point that you can give over here is the risk. Uh, you know, when you talk about the weaknesses of the dividend growth model, uh, it has been often criticized that it does not consider risk. So, uh, you know, th this model considers risk implicitly because the risk faced by the company is reflected in the share price. So even though it does not directly take the risk, but because it is taking the share price, it is in a way uh, considering the risk. But if you talk about the CAPM model, it is explicitly considering risk. How? Uh, it is specifically considering your systematic risk because uh, it has an assumption that uh, all of the investors are holding diversified portfolios. So CAPM basically calculates the cost of equity that should be there with systematic risk that the ordinary shareholders are holding. Then if you talk about the dividend growth rate, uh, it has a weakness that uh, it is the dividend growth rate that you take it is assumed to be constant but when you talk about the real life it actually keeps on changing from year to year so if you just calculate uh, the dividend growth for each of the years individually you will see it's a figure which changes so you know which dividend growth rate should a company be taking so that it reflects what the future growth is going to look like this is another uh, weakness that your dividend growth model has dividend growth rate is assumed to be constant. Then if you talk about the weaknesses of uh, the dividend growth model, basically uh, further weaknesses are that, you know, it is ignoring taxation, it is ignoring issue costs, but you know, this can be modified to consider both of the factors. Another criticism that we have is that the company has no value if it does not pay dividends because, uh, you know, uh, this model cannot give you possibly an answer if the company does not pay you any dividends. So this is another weakness that it cannot be used uh, where, you know, there are no dividends that are being paid by the company. Company. Then coming to your CAPM model, uh, a weakness over here is that it will be difficult for a firm to, you know, establish the values of the key variables that is the equity risk premium, the risk free rate and the equity beta. So the risk premium is basically found from the analysis of what we do of, you know, the data that is there from long periods of time and different studies can give you different values. So determining a risk free rate of return is hampered by the fact that a risk free asset does not exist a substitute like uh, you know a yield on short term dated debt is used instead so uh, equity beta also if you see is derived from uh, you know the statistical analysis of historic data and you know it can be uh, it cannot be assumed that all of the figures that we have gotten are uh, you know for sure correct they are certain to be correct then if you talk about the beta values, they are assumed to be constant, but you know, they change on a regular basis. So in a perfect world with perfect data, both DGM and your CAPM model will give the same value for the cost of equity. However, we live in a world that is far from perfect. So each method has its own merits and demerits. Moving ahead to the very last requirement, where you need to explain the connection between the creditor hierarchy and the relative costs of finance. 
so if you see over here creditor hierarchy basically is the order of preference that you that a company has when the financial claims are being settled if a company is you know into liquidation if the company is no longer a going concern they are winding up so in what sequence will the debt be paid in what sequence will financial claims be paid so if you see the higher the position in the creditor hierarchy there's a greater chance that you receive all the money so at the top of creditor hierarchy you will find the secured debt like loan notes like bank loans with a fixed interest uh, you know rate or a charge over the non current assets so over here the risk that they face is very low so because they are facing a very low risk uh, they require the lowest relative return theoretically if you see the before tax cost of secured debt is the lowest before tax cost of capital of the company then if you come further after secured debt you have unsecured debt like unsecured loan notes or bank loans which do not have a charge on any assets so uh, the providers of this finance have a higher risk when you talk about uh, the secured debt so they will have a higher rate of return uh, you know that they would want if you compare to the secure uh, debt holders then if you talk about going further uh, down the creditor hierarchy at the bottom you will find a uh, preference after uh, secured debt and unsecured debt you will find preference shares so these are the people who get a preference in uh, you know payment of any dividends before the ordinary shareholders so again they are taking a higher risk than your secured and unsecured debt holders so they need to be compensated for that accordingly then at the very last come your equity ordinary shareholders so after all of the claims have been settled if money is left only then do the ordinary shareholders get anything back on the liquidation of the company so they are carrying the highest risk so because they are carrying a highest risk they are also rewarded with the highest return so if you see the cost of equity is higher than the cost of preference shares or the before tax cost of debt so even you can link it to the scenario that if you talk about marble company uh, the cost of equity is roughly 13% preference shares is roughly 11% and secured debt is roughly 7.8% so the lower you go in the hierarchy the higher the cost of capital becomes with this we are through with this question as well i hope that this uh, video was useful towards your revision uh, thank you for watching